Hello, today we'll be doing an experiment called color chromatography. So first up, here are some materials we'll be using for today. A piece of tin foil, a paper cup, a coffee filter, five toothpicks, a pack of Skittles, some colored dye, and a pencil. The first step is to pour a little bit of water into your cup. Make sure it's not too much and that it just covers the bottom layer. Then unwrap your Skittles. We'll be using five colors today, red, orange, yellow, green, and purple. Dip your finger into the water and place a small droplet in front of each Skittle. We'll be using this to take the dye off the Skittle. Now, place each Skittle on top of your drop of water and let it sit for a couple minutes. You'll notice the water start changing color. That is the colored dye on the Skittle coming off. Meanwhile, we can set this aside and fold our coffee filter. You want to fold it into a rectangular shape. So some, something like this. Next, take your pencil and draw a line about an inch from the bottom of your rectangle. Mark off six notches that are evenly spaced. These will correspond to your different colors. You can label them red, orange, yellow, green, purple, and food coloring. Now let's go back and take a look at your Skittles. Take each Skittle off its drop of water. There should be a very bright colored dot underneath the Skittle. Next, dip each toothpick into your colored dot and draw another dot on the notch you made on your coffee filter. Try to make the dot as brightly colored as possible. And make sure to switch toothpicks between each color so they don't interfere. If you think your Skittles dots aren't bright enough, you can repeat the previous steps and get more colored dots on your foil. If you have some food coloring left over from last time, you can also put a droplet on the food coloring notch that we made. I use the color black for this demo. Give it some time to dry. Your coffee filter should look like this in the end. Now that your coffee filter is ready, we'll be placing it inside water in the cup. Make sure that the water is only a thin layer at the bottom of the cup. You can fold the paper so that it stands inside the cup like this. And now just let it sit for a couple minutes. So that you can clearly see what is happening inside the paper cup, I'll be using a plastic petri dish for this demo. After five or so minutes, Take your coffee filter out of the cup and squeeze the bottom to get rid of any excess water. Then lay it on your table for it to dry. Before it completely dries, use your pencil to note the boundary of the water. This is known as the waterfront. 
Next, use your pencil to mark off the boundaries of different colors. For colors that have multiple, mark it off at every single one. And that concludes today's experiment. So some questions you might be wondering are, how did the water go up the paper? How did different colors travel different distances? And why do some colors divide into multiple? So to begin answering these questions, we must start from the basics. First, what are molecules? Molecules are a group of atoms that are bonded together. Atoms, as we covered earlier, are the smallest unit of matter. Everything around us are made of atoms and molecules. When two different types of molecules are combined together, they can form something called mixtures. There's also something called electric charge. Positive and negative charges exist around us as well. Like charges repel and opposite charges attract. Some molecules are polar, meaning they have a positively charged end and a negatively charged end. For example, water is a polar molecule. In the diagram below, you can see that the ends that have hydrogen are more positive and the end with oxygen is more negative. There are polar and nonpolar molecules. Polar molecules like other polar molecules and nonpolar molecules like other nonpolar molecules. But polar molecules and nonpolar molecules do not stick together well. And this is because charges within the polar molecules attract each other and repel the nonpolar molecules. A very common example is water and oil. Oil is a nonpolar molecule, so it does not mix well with water. Now we can answer the question why water was able to move up the coffee filter. This is known as capillary action. It is the ability for water to travel upwards against the force of gravity. Remember that water is a polar molecule. Paper, which is made from cellulose, is also polar. There are two key words to learn here. First, cohesion. Since water molecules are polar, they tend to form very strong bonds with other water molecules. The second word is adhesion. Because of the charges on water molecules in cellulose, water molecules tend to stick to paper as well. In more general terms, cohesion is the ability of similar molecules to stick to each other, and adhesion is the ability of different kinds of molecules to stick to each other. For paper and water, the adhesive force is stronger than the cohesive force. So that means these charges can pull water up the coffee filter. One very common example of capillary action that you see every day is in plants. As water goes from the roots to the leaves of plants, it uses cohesion and adhesion to pull the next water molecule up toward the roots. The sun helps by evaporating the topmost molecule of water which means that all the other molecules can go up as well and water can flow through the plant. Another example of cohesion and adhesion is when you pour water into a cup. You'll notice that the water tends to rise on the sides next to the border of the cup, creating this parabolic shape like this. That's because the adhesive force is stronger than the cohesive force. For compounds such as liquid mercury, when you pour it into a cup, it will actually create an upward parabolic shape because the cohesive force between mercury molecules is stronger than the adhesive force to the sides of the cup. Now, why were the different colored inks able to go up the paper as well? Since food coloring is soluble in water, as water travels up the paper, it carries the ink, so the ink is also traveling upwards. Different colors travel at different amounts because they have different sizes. The black ink separated into four different colors, red, yellow, green, and blue. Since molecules are made of different atoms, they are also of very different sizes. You can have water, which is made of just two hydrogen and one oxygen, or cellulose, which is a long chain of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens that is long enough to make a plant. As a result of this, different dyes separate based on their size. 
Larger dye molecules are trapped in the paper, so they don't travel as far. Smaller dye molecules are easily carried through the paper, so they travel farther up with the water. Notice in our, in our experiment how the waterfront was ahead of all the other different colors. So a recap of some concepts we covered today. First, molecules. Molecules are a group of atoms bonded together like water. For electric charge, we discussed that like charges repel and opposite charges attract. For polarity, we learned that some molecules like water have a negatively charged side and a positively charged side. This creates polar attraction. Two polar molecules like each other because there are interactions between opposite charges, whereas a polar and nonpolar molecule don't like each other like oil and water. Cohesion and adhesion were used to discuss capillary action. For cohesion, we learned that the polar attraction between water molecules allows it to stick strongly to itself. And for adhesion, we learned that the polar attraction between water molecules and other molecules causes it to stick strongly to different surfaces. So this presentation was created by Sabrina and Sidra and me from Opportunity X. We hope you had fun today and learned a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to email Opportunity X or put it in the comments below. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.